I have not seen this before. My first time watching this. Red Bulls. Back then, OG. we went into it with the mentality that friendship will, will win in the end. But at one point in your life, something's gonna change. Change always happens. Snow tail. When I first saw it, uh -huh. it was really hard. I think I was inexperienced, like even in life. I didn't know myself. In hindsight, that was an incredible turning point. I didn't realize how big it was, but now looking back at it, this changed my life. It's hard to believe how much things changed. Jerax. It changed into something nobody would ever expect. One of the things I've learned is that actually I appreciate my teammates, my friends. I don't know fly. I appreciate yet. the people who are around me. Without these people, I think it would have been a completely different story. Too loud, or at its heart, this is a story about it's good. It's got serious. There's 25 million dollars on the line, the largest prize pool in esports history. We've got 20,000 fans here in the arena. 20,000 following from their homes. It seems impossible for this team to take home a championship. A team ranked dead last by the majority of pundits. Dead last? What do you think about OG making it this far? They weren't even the same team a couple months ago. OG have had such a miracle run. Even when they're behind, you always have that feeling like it's never over. It's <laughs> never over. The ultimate underdog story. The story could end here, and it could be a fairy tale. But this is a story about something much more than a game. That's crazy. Because when the stakes are this high, and the odds are against you, you find out who your true friends are. They came from open qualifiers. My name is uh, Johan Sundstein. My nickname is No Tail. I play competitive esports. Me and Tao, we go way back. Hello, everyone. He was my first teammate, like, inside and outside of the game. I have a question for all the viewers. What do you think about this hair? Yeah, it's not too sure about that. No. It was it was a close bond. It's, it's like okay. how brothers. You, how do you think? Go I can not look, like look at your hair and feel serious about it. I can't. There's nothing wrong with my hair. Be careful. I might gash her. <laughs> no tail and fly. You could ask anyone in esports. This is the ultimate friendship. These are two guys that have just stuck with one another, thick and thin, throughout different rosters, different years, different teams, even. The way me and Tal uh, met was uh, in a public game. We were playing almost every day, like either practicing or just pubbing or whatever, so we ended up talking a lot all the time. You know, he's like a brother to me. When we started, we didn't really know the esports scene was going to be a thing. It was just us playing games, and we got kind of thrown into what was this whole movement. 2011. Wait, this is way back. I might have been at this Gamescom. I think I might have been here, probably. Some of the world's best teams here in Dota. And they're handing out a tournament prize of one point six million dollars. Oh, that guy. TI, which is short for the International, is the biggest competition in Dota 2, which is one of the most popular esports in the world. Every single competitive Dota player wants TI above all else. In the first International. It was a $1.6 million prize pool, which had never been done. It yeah. was revolutionary. Before TI, there was almost nothing in terms of career viability with esports. Esports in the earliest days of Let's started go. These are the graphics I like. Tournaments and Space Invaders tournaments, uh, just to see who could get the highest score. Being paid at all for winning a tournament was crazy. But with the rise of the international, you had this sort of Epochal shift. When you talk about the international, it's a really big deal. The Super Bowl of pro gaming, the biggest tournament, the prize pool, Who is millions of the Super Bowl of pro gaming. Los Angeles the biggest feature sports prize pool <laughs> of millions of dollars. And each year it's increased, it's got bigger and bigger. 
And the more money, the bigger the stage. The people you see playing international are the best of the best in eSport, and that's because Dota 2 is a game with lots of nuance and detail to play. It's a game of high skill, high focus. But make no mistake, it's not just about skill. A little bit of luck. It's about how you play together. Uh, this is a team game. The goal is to destroy the enemy's ancient which is the main structure in the base. Best accent in the world. Dutch English. Dota 2 is a five-on-five five game of Capture the Flag. You spend the game Capture building the up the power of your heroes, which are selected before the game in a draft sequence. Capture the ancient. With over a hundred different heroes, each hero having different abilities, the flag there are seemingly a infinite <laughs> combinations that make each game as unique as possible, five and five. one of the reasons why Tug so many war. people around the world love to follow Dota 2. Growing so fast, you, you have no idea how far it will go, how big it can get. Our first international was TI3. It was in 2013. We were playing under the name Fnatic at the time. I know that name. I remember we were so stoked. So we've been working for a year now to get here. It's been a really long ride and like it's so much. He's from TI. Israel? You know, that's like... Then he came a long way. Who is the tall guy on the right? Israel. Who is the tall guy with the blue hat? Going to America, playing in front of a crowd, and we got our chance Patty. to prove that we could be the best. It was intense, like, it was on a whole nother level. Hola, hola, get Dalla. On the Pinecat, smash him back, bring him down fast. Pinecat slow, Pinecat's dead. Two more fall, and GG Fnatic are guaranteed a top big finish at the International. Big made top eight at the international. They captured the flag. Win. Fnatic, I think they're capable of winning against any team. We're rooting for Fnatic. We started high. But then, yeah, you, you play somebody that's been doing this for a long time, and oh boy. We have to remember Fnatic, this is their first TI appearance. Rats Dota. A it's a great performance. But Fnatic Experts is going up against Orange. We do say Orange are the favors. Orange oh. versus Fnatic. Buyback is on cooldown and Orange. They will take this bottom Nice jackets. And there is nothing the Fnatic can do to stop them. Double kill for Mushy. Buyback by Darkseer. Buyback by the SF and Mushy. Triple Ultra and GG. We got put in our place. Fnatic have been eliminated by the Malaysians. Malaysians. Orange will advance themselves forward. Back then, we were not ready. So they got top eight to five. After TI3, we did have a serious talk. I mean, after every TI, there's a lot of roster shuffles. You know, the grass is always greener. I want to play with different players, things like this. Mm. But we thought experience matters. We, uh, we learn together. This will do us good for the next TI. That's tough decisions. It's really hard when you're friends. If you make it to TI. To be realistic. Before you get to play in front of the crowd in the arena, you have to play group stages and you do. It's really tough on your friends to be realistic about whether you should continue to invest in each other. And it feels very backstabby if you think one guy is weaker than the rest to like eliminate them. And then you're gonna have to adapt with a new person who may have their own baggage and their own problems and it may be better or worse. And everyone is like looking at you and you're all judging each other and yourself. And it's really, really tough. Do you continue to invest? When do you think all hope is gone? Yeah. You do that from a hotel room. There's a chance you will never make it out of that hotel room. Here with No Tail, this tournament, you know, it, it didn't go the way you guys wanted it to go. What, uh, what do you think the reasons were? Um, all in all, I think there's been a bunch of things coming to this disappointing result, and there's not so much we could have done about it. I think we did try our best still. 
I, I've been in teams and uh, I, I've had like friends in teams and, and sometimes people that were better and sometimes they were worse. And I, yeah, I know firsthand how difficult it is to, I mean, nobody likes to fire anybody or like nobody likes to like eliminate anybody. Despite working an entire year, they couldn't even get out of the group stage. Yes, we are here for what could be the very last game of our grand final 2014. Losing this one the way we did, all that is stuck in your head is you're out, it's over. Somebody else is gonna win. Yeah, it sucks. It feels so bad. It's not gonna be you. You, you could feel so envious. It's a really hard pill to swallow. You could feel so envious. There were envious. some issues before the CI and everybody in Fnatic, they were ready to burn some bridges that they weren't ready to burn a year before. After TI4, Fly and Notel found themselves on a new team. And in their minds, this is going to be a superstar roster. Team Secret, we, we did feel like a super team. But then there was this star ladder tournament. And it's onto the throne. They got Secret by the jugular, and they take We ended up losing. And that hit us really hard. Mm. And after that, I, I kind of saw it coming. But just months to the next TI, Fly and Notel found themselves kicked from the very team they had just joined. They were forced to join different teams Man, I, this is not. This is really not what I wanted to happen. This is not how I meant for things to go down. Hi, Casey. Did you see that team, Kuro, S4, and Puppy? No. No problem. Just gonna get y'all mic'd up. Cameras rolling. Hotel, take one. So we're just gonna start with some basic questions. What are your biggest strengths as a team? Complexity. We're kind of an underdog. We're a very new team. We're only together for about three months. What role do you play right now, currently? Right now, I play support for Cloud9. What about uh, Team Fnatic? You guys seem to scatter a little bit. Are you still in contact with a lot of those guys? Mostly Notel. He's a really good friend of mine. We've been playing together ever since I've been playing competitive. When was this Obviously, filmed? Obviously Notel's here. I saw him. We were having a fun time. Uh, but I miss being together as a team. Every good Dota team understands the phrase TI 2015? Wait, so this footage is Perfect combined over many years? These sort of traits. Like Did they like, get and, footage you know, from empathy? others or film it all themselves? Dota is a team game. It is not about you. It's about everyone around you. Do your teammates understand this too? Um, I've tried to talk to my teammates yeah, yeah. about these things. Uh, they don't view them the same way as I do at all. Uh, but I've been very happy playing for them. Let, and I'm very, let me say again. Um, I've tried to... Do your teammates understand this too? Um, I've tried to talk to my teammates about these things. Uh, they don't view them the same way as I do at all, but I've been very happy playing for them and I'm very excited going into TI with Cloud9. Awesome. That's it. Cloud9 call a GG. They know they are so far behind. They will give up their position here at the International. VG Gaming will move forward. Megas against VG Gaming. There are no he didn't look excited. Yeah. Heroes of Complexity and GG. Complexity will be eliminated from the International Five and Virtus Pro. Yes, the lights have gone out on Complexity's year for the International in 2015. No Tail and Fly were playing together even before Dota 2, back during the days of Heroes of New Earth in 2K9. Wow. Tel Aviv. Dude, Tel Aviv is gorgeous. Ever since I was a kid, I always I've never been I to hated it, so. losing. I hated losing so much but I also love the competing. I always thought maybe I would go into like being a fighter. I can do one pull up too. Like my dad, that was very good at judo and, and jujitsu and all these things I did, I was very talented. You know, I wanted to make my dad happy to, you know, be strong for him, to win things, to, to kind of compete. It's something that's always been with me. Whatever I do, losing is kind of not an option. I wouldn't be able to place his accent as being Israeli, and it sounds more uh, German to me. After uh, a TI5 Fly's dad failure, made Krav Maga? Personally, what? I was probably at an all-time low. So he's famous? There was one night, like, I ended up vomiting, and I thought about every loss. And every time I thought about a loss, I felt even worse. Every accent sounds German to you, I think. Yeah, I know I said night. that before. <laughs> I think that was probably the sickest I felt in my whole life. 
I was uh, ready to call it quits. Oh man. But then I had a talk with Tal about playing together again. Myself and Notel, we know each other very well. You know, we're friends. We rely on each other. We lean on each other. And we decided to go into this together, to make it, make it as friends, make it as a team, do something new. Looks like an unbreakable friendship. Team OG friendship. was formed by myself and No Tail. Big idea behind OG is a mindset of friendship, but also want to win. It's a mix of hunger, talent, atmosphere, team dynamic. This is what matters. We just want to do things right, like do things our way. They were going to create a team from the ground up, just finding three like-minded individuals. Historically in esports, the elite teams will pick up fresh talent from the tier two and tier three teams. It was highly unusual to pluck amateur talent from the broader public. I never thought that anyone's gonna come talk to me because I was Miracle. a pub player. Miracle. I looked at his gameplay and he completely carried the game. Cool. Pub players play public matches. It's in this like casual at home environment playing with nobody watching you. So Miracle was Imagine player playing that with nobody watching competitive guys. experience. But this was the guy that I really wanted to play with. And then I brought Moon over from Complexity. I knew he fit our style. And the last one was Crit. He was always around, never really on a top team, but he shared a similar mindset as us. And I'm the captain. I try to you know, be the, the pillar for everyone. You have to have five players who are on the same page. I think it's the oldest scale of sports. You can buy speed, you can buy height, you can buy strength. You can't buy trust, you can't you, buy communication. You can buy speed? Strength. You can't buy Question trust. Mark? You can't buy communication. You can buy height. You, you, you can buy speed. You can buy this height. This is the worst speech you ever. Can <laughs> you can't buy trust. You can't buy communication. <laughs> but you need all five in order to win a championship. <laughs> Bro, what are you on? Frank from the first ever anyway, shop. moving on. As the popularity of Dota 2 grew, the sheer volume of those competing meant the sport could sustain a season of high-profile competitions leading oh, up like to Oh, getting TI. tall basketball After players, TI5, fast runners. Valve introduced yeah, a new okay. competitive system in Dota 2. It was called Majors. Three million dollar on the line per Major, and implications of getting an invite to TI if you would win a Major. No tell and flies team, a band of unlikely individuals that had never really had any crazy amount of success previously in Dota Is 2. Is it a miracle the Ark Warrior? They were the defender? underdogs coming into the first major. Nobody really expected anything. Oh, wow, so you quite an arc. The power couple was reunited once again, and it seemed like they could do anything. It's so amazing, we come out, we're winning, and everyone's cheering OG, there's nothing better than that. OG! This is the first generation of a new type of athlete, and these esports athletes are coming into it. First generation? Wasn't this in 2015 or so? I was competing in 2003. I wasn't the first generation either. They were competing in 1998, anyway. Incredibly high pressure situations, immediately. This Playing guy again! Of Dude, can, can this, oh. People in front of millions online and four millions of dollars. That's the height like buying guy. <laughs> you can buy heights, you can buy speeds, you can go back in time and be the first esports competitor in 2015. Anyway, it's big. Fine. <laughs> when you look at the really big time high level teams, they are looking for any competitive edge they can find. Around that time, all these majors I can't and find the right chronology. Super intense. It was like a pressure cooker. And so a couple teams started getting coaches. So finding a coach in conventional sports, you get someone who was a star player in a previous generation, <laughs> or just maybe a good player who had a really good mind for the game. Esports, you don't really have a previous generation of star. So where do you get your coach? What do you mean? Beginning of 2016, I, uh, I was living in Paris. I was actually focusing on future life plans. I mean, university, college, all these things. 
<laughs> at that point, I had a you big, really captured uh, my flag, yeah. For whoa, three years or something. <laughs> this is when it gets real. Counter Logic Gaming going up against MTW, the guys from France. My name is Afing Man, my real name is Sebastian Depps. I love the game, obviously. I wanted to be the best, but I was really far from it. TI2, yeah, I competed. He matched, he wants the black hole, he picked up Aki, he picked but up Black My team was like bottom three. tier of the tournament. MTW are the first team to be eliminated from the international 2012. The sacrifices were too heavy. I think I was kind of losing myself. Mm. I had put everything aside for Dora and it just came back and kind of hit me in the face. Yeah. And then I got a message through Twitter. OG heard that I wasn't an active player anymore and wanted to see if I would be interested to coach them. My first reaction was that I didn't want to because I had given up on Dota pretty much. Sebastian, he had played a lot of different teams. And I know Sebastian was working really hard, but he was caught in these teams that couldn't really make it. I was watching a lot of Dota still because I mean, I'm very passionate about the game. The way he spoke about the game, you could tell. It wasn't just passion, it was brains. And this is kind of what we saw. OG, I had watched almost all their games at the Frankfurt Major, maybe all of them. This was a team that was playing already on the highest levels. Like, these guys are champion material. This coaching thing, it was a very unique opportunity. Yeah. You might not get this chance again, so seize it. Next thing you know, I'm on a plane to the Manila Major. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome cool. to the Manila Major. Oh my god. The idea of a coach what an audience. kind of did it because it was just like what other teams were doing. I wouldn't say forced, but a, a tiny bit forced. Wait, what's what? forced? I wouldn't say forced, I did it because ah. it was just like what other teams were doing. Mm. I wouldn't say forced, but a, a tiny bit forced. Welcome on stage, OG. I definitely didn't realize the potential of Sebastian's role in the team until Manila Major no tell, trying to lock down Matumba Man, finish him off. The wolf will fall. OG getting the core kill, but the jug looks like he, he might told us what the other team is going to do. And it was 100% on point. Draft. That's a new hero. Gameplay. Nice. No engage forward. Miracle there with the BKB. Basically, like their strategy. OG are doing it. Liquid. They can't withstand the punishment. We had the team. Whoa. We just felt ourselves. Like, we were just feeding off each other. OG. Champions. Uh, Manila Major was... <laughs> but, uh, it was incredible. Huge shout out to our coach set. This would have never happened without him. Sebastian, great job to him. Part of the value of winning championship is who you win it with. OG, they were known for their teamwork and communication. That was the anchor. You win together, you lose together. You, you want to create this feeling that uh, everybody has each other's back. Everyone else was switching people in and out, but OG were able to stay as a unit, and it was paying off. They he were winning major tournaments, and going into that year's international, they were pitted to be the team to take the championship title at TI6. TI6. Ladies I, and gentlemen, I don't even welcome know who won this. to the international 2016. Who's ready? Who's ready? The teams are arriving, the players, the fans are hyped, and we're all here waiting for the international start. Terrific series to kick off the International 2016. For TI6, our chances were obviously great. I think we were feeling really good. We were considered as like one of the best teams, if not the best team in the world. Starting from the Frankfurt Major and then Manila, they really cemented. They are the top team right now. They are absolutely the team that everybody's looking to take down. We're seed one. So much hype around us. Anything but top three would be like huge disappointment. They are definitely grouped up. They are ready to try and have a five on five. Miracle, now stifling. Dagger QI! He rips apart Miracle. Double kill inside the fountain of OG. Almost an impossible ask for OG to come back from this. QI jumps down, he finds Miracle. Holding Miracle there, allowing the act to finish it. And GG, well played. MVP had trashed. The two-time oh. major winners, the guys who are hoping to put a TI win under their belt, they may have to do
do it through the lower bracket. Uh, lower bracket. And the turning in, OGTI that's 6 that's was one of the best teams that ever played Dota. But the mindset that we had going into games, of course, it uh, it impacts the Dota part. We are going to return. They probably to thought of themselves as the favorites. We went into this TI like I think we felt the highest amount of pressure yeah. that we've ever felt before. Yeah. We do have two teams. They won too many small tournaments before this. Done for another year. For their mindset, which is not where OG had thought they'd be, let alone where we all thought they'd be. Most Dota tournaments, if you lose in the upper bracket, you still have a chance to make a run to the finals through the lower bracket. Double elimination, it's about being able to take a beating and maybe come back. It is time for TNC versus OG. OG. We all knew that we were so good. We were so good. But we were definitely playing not to lose. We almost hit the hour mark as TNC. They'll enter the mid. Do so they go for scared. a GG push? Yep, they are. They're attacking the T4 towers. Array the jump forward. Crit, he needs help now. That wall will it be enough. Kirk is still there. Eliminated on day number two, a TI6, something that I would never imagine myself. I hearing. cannot believe it. <laughs> Jesus. Your whole life is about that tournament. So when it ends, I don't think you quite accept it. Your brain just doesn't process the fact that it's over. Being in the audience. Really it. like, there's no way we did all this like Be a blackout. Being noise. <laughs> You know, the mountain that you're supposed to climb, it just keeps getting higher and trickier. Like, from the beginning of the season, you look at something so tall and so hard to get up, and you don't know how to do it. You don't, you don't even know where to begin. You, you feel so small, like, and helpless. After TI6, um, we were not able to dodge the roster shot. Is that relatable? No, I've never felt small. Well, Moomiander uh, was yes. not a good fit for me as a player, and Crit, he had other avenues he wanted to seek. Like, he's for a long time wanted to play with EG and some of the players on EG. And I think when Miracle saw Big and you know, the team like falling apart, he also looked at something that looked a lot nicer than trying to rebuild this. But the no tell. Hard players on T Hatful. Moomiander uh, was not a good fit for me as a player, and Crit, he had other avenues he wanted to seek. Like, he's for a long time wanted to play with EG and some of the players on EG. And I think when Miracle saw, you know, the team, like, falling apart, he also looked at something that looked a lot nicer than trying to rebuild this. But the No-Tail Fly duo, it doesn't break. These two want to just continue and build a new team with them two at the core of it. Right out of the gate, they added top tier talent. They got S4 from another team. Very, very I don't know former it. TI winner. Former TI winner. I mean, TI winner. You know, everybody remembers when Alliance won TI3. That's another day in Finland. Getting Jarex made sense. And what the, the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> it was the best four position during that time. YOLO, I'm going. <laughs> oh, I thought joining OG. Having Jarex drawn was super hype. He's incredibly good at the game. You're very confident, but you're also humble about it. I think it's a very finished thing in the end. If you win TI, can you be a little excited? Will I you know. brag a little bit then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they picked up Anna. Cute. Anna was I'm like, what? Why would you get someone from Australia? So I was born in Melbourne. I lived here with two of my sisters and one <laughs> of my brother kidding. and my mom. And I pretty much lived here my whole life until I went pro with Dota. They got the, this, this Australian kid. He was a bit of a shot in the dark. People didn't know what to expect from Anna. He was a complete unknown. He came out of nowhere. I was just playing pubs every day. I was a bit, not cocky, but like... Actually, yeah, I was cocky. <laughs> <laughs> 
We went through with the roster and like finalized it. And Jerex and S4, there was no doubt in our mind. But Anna, it kind of went out on the limb. Like I just play like what I whatever want to play, and like it's like so easy. Like <laughs> I don't know how to say. Easy We've for never him. Never really played consistently on a top team. But Anna, like I mean, he was truly talented. We we saw it really quickly. The way he approached the game, it wasn't influenced by other players' play style. It wasn't influenced by how people think. It wasn't influenced by anything. It was pure. It was kind of a risk in a way, but from my perspective, first conversation with Anna. Anna said, let's go win some majors. <laughs> there was an S there, you know? So one was not enough. There is that insane confidence in him. Nice. Let's go win some majors. Welcome on stage. You love OG. to see it. Going into Boston Major with this new roster, we felt really good. We felt really confident. But even then, the rebuilding from a two-man roster, and you're gonna have to prove it, just like you're nobody. How are you feeling about this tournament? I think there's no team here that can uh, beat us in the best of five. The Fly and No-Tail brothers have been kind of holding hand through it all, but I mean, the team has undergone some real shuffles. Jerex, he's an interesting character. Can you hold a conversation with him? Yeah. <laughs> Jerex, we dictate the tempo of the game. He's like a dog that's chasing a ball, but you can't really see the ball. So you're just trying to run after the dog who's running after the ball. My position, it's more like a roaming type. Mostly, I'm just moving around the map, disabling enemies. So he's the guilty one. It's Why? very crucial that I'm led to do my thing. Like it's Karoki like, said, they're yeah, monkeying he around. Think, he's the, the silverback. Boston Major was the third major we won. The roster had changed, but the one thing that was consistent was me and Tal. It felt like nothing could stop us. This team, this roster, felt so, so good. Jurex, we knew how good it was as a player, right? Anna was the opposite. Anna had incredible potential, flashes of brilliance, but um, Kiev, Kiev made him a different player. Welcome to the Kiev Major, the last major before we head to the International 2017. Wow. Kiev Major for Anna, it showed I like miss all this. what kind of a player he is. It's committed and Anna feels this the opportunity. He doesn't really think of the things that can go bad. He thinks about what he can do and then he goes for it. No hesitation. I'm just gonna run in and fuck with him. That is the best way to play. And Anna, he had it inside him. Adam with a double kill. Oh. I think joining OG was the best day of my life. Nice. <laughs> oh, dude. The fact that I was given a chance. Before Kiev Major, I didn't know if I was up to the challenge. But they just don't have the damage to repel RG. RG will be claimed four time. Dota 2 Major winners here in Kiev. Kiev Major it was really a shock when they won. I always thought BP was a really, really good team. Taking a win from them, you really want to celebrate. At the Boston Major, No Tail said nobody can beat OG in a best of five. <laughs> Three was incredible. Four, I think, I mean, it's even more so. What it's... comes off the legend? We just hit like a stride where we really found what's good for us. <laughs> hit the stride, literally fell the through. The highest level of is played when every little detail is thought through. It's something that is beautiful in the sense that I've never found this in anything else in my life. Here, major, we found our strengths, and uh, Sebastian really brought us together as a team. He's like one of the players, and uh, he deserves the moment to celebrate with us. Like one of the players. Prophetic words. At this point, OG with no talent fly, four majors. It's, it's an achievement that I don't think we'll ever see anyone be able to reach again in the world of Dota 2. I did feel like a big sense of achievement. You know, wow, four tournaments. A lot of people were telling me nobody has done this before. This is way better than winning a TI. This to me wasn't really the truth. I always looked at TI as being worth more than anything. I've watched two true sides here. Welcome to the International! Of the International Seven. The nearly $24 million prize pool with, for the first time, eight figures for first place. 10 million goes to the winner. OG was already writing history with winning four majors at that point. Next up, the international. We were into TI7. We knew that we were good enough to perform really well at the tournament. 
Here we go. OG taking on LGD. A lot of eyes are on them, of course. Yet we didn't have the results we expected. They're gonna bring him down. Chewing through on it. LGD outlasting OG here. We just didn't adapt well enough. We didn't play well enough. LGD, they do it again. Three deaths for Ana early in this middle lane. Well, from a Dota point of view, it was catastrophic. No tails next. No buybacks on three. The end is nigh. GG. LGD, slay the beast. 50 to they 29 kills. Completely outplayed and just dumpstered by a better team. Is a bitter pill to swallow for OG, for their fans, four-time major champions, but it's just something about TI that OG just can't oh, seem to get it together. That's where the pundits and announcers and even you are starting to develop a it complex. Sucked. It's it like, really sucked to lose another they one. They just underperform at TI, you know what I mean? Like, it starts to become this curse. You can never let things become a curse because it starts psyching everyone out. It sucks, you know? It sucks to lose. Everybody knows that. Thank you, Fly. I appreciate you taking the time. Fly and no tail. They have all these incredible accomplishments but the capstone for every player is winning TI. And for OG, another TI, unsuccessful. It's really shitty to say, but you gotta win TI. As Dota got bigger, the international got bigger. The prize money got bigger. The stakes got higher, and as the stakes got higher, the pressure intensified on OG in every single way. And they simply weren't stepping up to it fans started to question what is it about OG that seems to stop them from being able to have success as an international? See? I mean, I don't know. I, 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 to be honest, I, I don't know what uh, makes you able to come into TI as a favorite and then still win. I think it's incredibly hard. What is it that we're doing wrong? Why is it that we are not able to become the team that can win this title? So yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't know. There was problems of like being too emotional in the games. We were kind of like uh, shattered, I would say. You can only take so much, right? Like every time you go for TI and every time you lose, yeah. every punch feels different. After This TI. is kind of true. The grief of losses tends to pile up in your head more than the glory of winning. So the longer you compete in something, the harder it can get mentally because you've got so many memories of how you lost mistakes you're trying to learn from. They can really weigh on you. Yes, Evan, there was a bit of fatigue, especially in Inanna. People can get really, really harsh, even towards a 17-year-old boy that is thousands of miles away from home. And it happens very often in Dota. And that's what it was with Anna. I mean, he was getting a lot of flack. A lot of players, they just break because of it. I think I was quite weak mentally. I was just like young and I mean, after TI7, I would hear about what the haters would say, and pff, uh, it affected me. If I had to go through what he had gone through at the age of 17, I... <laughs> I will say, as a streamer, you get those things, but then as a... and I can handle it, no problem. Sometimes it's even true, but as a... Uh, 17-year-old? I think I would have crumbled way before F he did. No, I couldn't have Everyone's it as a 17-year-old. But not everybody has a good mindset. You have to be strong. If you want to be the absolute best, you have to be mentally stronger than everyone else. It's so easy for people to just crumble when they start losing. It's just one tournament, but you screw it up once and it's, like, it's gone. It's a lot of pressure and I didn't really enjoy that pressure. After TI7, Anna, he, he wasn't ready to keep going. Man. After TI7, after they lose Anna, OG, they just, they seem lost. Why though? Well, he left the team. They found this player, Resolution. He'd been playing amazing at TI7. So OG, they grabbed him, they threw him in their team. But then for the rest of the year, they played utterly mediocre. There's the GG, good luck called by Fly. They fall flat in qualifiers, they fall flat in tournaments. Ever since then, OG has not been consistent. They're just not having any success. Over time, because they won so much and were so dominant, it's only natural that watching OG flounder a little bit, 
definitely was enjoyable for some people. Not much you can say about OG, really. They, they got dominated in the second game. It was definitely a tough game to watch. Yeah, very tough indeed. Um, when you lose a lot, you also lose trust. Things get hectic. You can have a conversation and then suddenly it's an argument and suddenly the argument uh, makes distrust. Yeah. Well said. Sometimes bad weeks can turn into bad months and by the time we got to Birmingham, it was definitely a downward spiral. Raise the roof here in Birmingham. It's OG. This no-tail fly duo, 905 career wins. You know, the next closest is over 200 behind. Like in terms of duos? I felt that something was in the air. On the side of OG, you've got S4. Gustav and Tal, they were talking more with each other, You're talking about some of the problems we were having in the team. The team was starting to be a bit dysfunctional. The title, MB Nortel jumps in trying to kill him, but he just... Evidence is there. Nobody really wants to acknowledge it. Where is this kill going But come? some kind of outside pressure definitely got in. And OG, this is the last to rock. Birmingham. We flunked out. Wow. All of a sudden, OG just falling apart there. Something's got to give. Who's going to be the first to lose, jump the we, trigger? We go back to the hotel. It's raining, it's thunder outside. Great time it's for an thunder. argument. Electricity is in the air. Fireworks in the hotel room. And no gay guy. And, uh, well, we just got called into a room. Oh, you're and all I fired. That the two players oh. are leaving, and one of them's my best friend. Talon S4, they're going to EG. S4 leaving? Sure, I can understand that. But Fly? Leaving OG, he's not just the captain. He owns part of the team. His girlfriend is the manager of the team. Mm. It would tear the team apart if he would leave. It was a huge shock. Like, we, we for sure didn't see it coming. Not much was said. I think Max, three sentences were spoken in that room. Wow, they had no then answer. They, they had no answer for him. We spent eight years together, and now it's over. That was how that happened. Tal leaving, is your captain leaving. He was always there for you uh, when you needed, so you don't expect it at all. I just trusted him. As simple as that, I just trusted him. He was the captain. That means something, at least to us. Uh, I always thought, me and Tal, something so strong, how can it break? This was probably the shittiest moment ever. The second he learned that Fly was leaving. He's allowed to feel how he feels about that. And it's all genuine and real. And also, it. I don't know, like, I don't know the details. It seems to me that Fly is also allowed to make his career decisions, even despite the friendship. And I saw a lot of people say traitor and stuff. What are you supposed to do if you think you need a change? It wasn't working. I saw a lot of traitor Fly, traitor Fly. I kept watching to see how, how evil his move was going to be. Like, how could he leave them hanging right before XYZ? How could he do this to them? He said he would never leave. Like, I, I, don't, I don't see that, really. Like, no trader trading to a different team. Yeah, trade Tor, trade Tor. <laughs> yeah, we're also not seeing his POV. They didn't have him speak. But even without himself defending himself, like, what's he meant to do? Either you kick someone else, you kick player A, B, or C, because you're you're like you're the, the two that are always together. You kick one of the other three or you leave. He left without words, that's not a friend's move. He didn't inform them at all. I mean, what well, what can he say? He could like not have another team lined up and be like, I'm starting to look for another team. I wanted to let you know first. Right? And then he doesn't have another team yet. And then he doesn't find another team and he stays. 
Or he can look for another team, find something, and then say, I know this sucks, but I've decided to make a career change and I'm going to move. And what can he say? Like, he literally told them in that room. Do you know what I mean? And the, yeah, the timing. But like, he probably truly didn't believe it was going to work out with them as a team at TI. So are you going to stay three months, invest when your heart is not in it? I think that's even more unfair. The timing is never perfect for it anyway. Like if you stay, if you honestly don't believe in the team anymore, either it's because you're too weak, someone else is too weak, it's not going to work together, you don't want to kick anyone, and then you leave three months before TI, leaving them high and dry in a lurch without a player, like it's going to ruin them. But like staying is better. You don't believe in it. You don't have your heart in it. You don't have a good team spirit. You don't have a mood. You're having arguments as a team. It's not meshing but you're staying even though you have an opportunity to go somewhere else. I don't think it makes sense. I don't think I would do that either. His face Could have talked a bit more than three sentences. Here's what I think happened. He told them it was really hard for him to tell them because of the friendship and because of the, uh, let's not pause on the cigarette. Change. It was like be be because of the friendship and because of uh, the the long experience that they had together and the position he was in with OG where he was part owner and so on, he told them and the energy just turned into Hades. Like suddenly in that room, it was probably like complete Hades. And, and nobody wants to talk because No Tail obviously extremely emotional uh, from it, understandably, 100% understandable and justifiable, you know. You know, he was he started surviving. You know what I mean? Like it's like the, the face of Sugaya is like surviving. Dora has given me so much. Um, when I'm really sad or when things aren't looking so good, but it doesn't mean that his feelings aren't valid. And all the rest and it's all or, back to and that. And it can even feel just, like betrayal. Just playing the Dora game. That's valid too. But I don't see Fly as a bad guy in this. It is done in the wrong way. Like uh, without with the info I have. Friend. We just all were staring at each other's and it was like, okay, guys, what's next? And then obviously what would have been next is yes, it goes to Finland and I go to France. Johan goes to Denmark and we just like grief what happened. It was almost as if each of us were looking at the other, waiting for that person to crack and say, I can't, I'm out, I'm going home. Either one of us could have probably just ended it all right then and there and it would have brought the other two with him. But we only had each other, and we were there for each other. I was like, hey guys, I think it's a really bad idea that we go our separate ways. I think you guys should come to Paris. You know, I, I don't really know what we're gonna do there, but we're just gonna be together for each other. And we're gonna talk about what we should do. Wow. Be together in Paris, I always huh? believe that the hardest choices in life are the right ones. The ones that are easy are usually the wrong ones. And in this case, there was only one right choice, and it was the hardest one by far, it was to rebuild. So forming a team three months before TI and having a shot at winning TI, no, not happening. Not happening. For TI8, we were going to have to take risks. We needed soldiers. We needed people that were ready to listen and ready to play. Three months left to the international. If somebody was good enough to be on a team, they were already on a team. Yeah, so that's I true. So I scout players a lot online. I spent a lot of time playing pubs, and there was this guy. So, yeah, so I, he jumps into unranked, and he just checked. I get frustrated when I get outplayed, you know? And when I get outplayed, it usually means that the guy's pretty good at the game. I'm going to focus on up and coming talent. Ranked, oh. In the future, we'll have maybe some more spotlight. And I remember being really frustrated playing against them. So as soon as we got a spot, uh, I definitely thought of guy. And, but the majority was like, who the hell is Thompson? Yeah, Frustrated. We might be able to call him and find out for ourselves. Thompson, you there? Thompson, I learned quickly that he was, well, similar to other Scandinavians. Maybe a <laughs> bit more reserved. I mean, everybody's good at something, and uh, for me, it's playing Dota, so. <laughs> how, how many pubs do you play on average a day? Uh, it's around 10 to 15, I guess. <laughs> 
15 is 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 pretty hardcore. Is I'm gonna it? give it the <laughs> Playing. I guess so. I used to play 40 games a day in Warcraft, but the games could take 5 to 15 minutes. I guess in this time, games were still taking an hour. So 15 is like pretty much your whole day, right? Games <laughs> with your friends is very different from playing in a competitive environment. It's a risk, but that guy was like extremely underrated and he was, as far as I was concerned, one of the best players outside of the pro scene. 12 to 15 hours, yeah. Or if you watch replays. choice for us was... Q time. Uh, Anna. Anna hadn't played for a long time. We knew Anna, though. We knew how powerful he was as a player. Anna coming back? I mean, people at that point were like, probably the last person still available. Sure, why not? This is some expendable shit After right here. After seven, I felt really drained. We're calling you out of retirement. Home, and I Your services are needed once again. What about like the year? Having a break, there was a lot of self-reflecting. Like, uh, I guess I grew up. But there was still one spot left to fill. This was perhaps the most interesting choice of all. The real question is why not Sebastian as a player instead of a coach? I'm happy when we achieve the highest level. That's the only thing that matters to me. If I have to coach, then I'll be coaching. But Johan really wanted me to play. Sebastian, huh. as somebody that talks about the game and understands the game, I thought he was the best. It was a huge challenge. I mean, I had never played at that level. Oh, wow. So, Jesse, can you guide us? No? And Damn. suddenly they, like, needed a coach. And I was like, OK. Oh, yeah, the coach good. position I, I opened up. Him. And then we needed a manager. I mean, I consider them all my brothers, but here we had a literal brother of Sebastian. <laughs> Charlie was there for us. The idea for me was help them as much as I can. Our boat caught fire during what? Birmingham. The ship was sinking, everything was shit. Like, we probably had half a ship. We managed to save it somehow. Jesus. I made it into the most beautiful ship ever. And yeah, I had to be the captain. Oh, I thought... <laughs> I thought they were also on a boat. <laughs> it's a metaphor, like... I get it. I was like, so, that went wrong too, on top of everything else? <laughs> a new team. And coming into TI-8, they did not get a direct invite. There was only one route for them, open qualifiers. In 2018, there were over 5,000 teams competing from home for just 10 open spots at TIA. Anybody can play in these, and it's do or die matches. How's the house? It's pretty good. Open qualifiers can be incredibly brutal. You have to play a lot of games. Wow. It's a whole different challenge. I wonder it's what about the format staying is. Focused, and it's about looking at every game one by one. Best but, of one. Uh, at the end of the day, our understanding of the game was ahead of these teams. OG, one they make best it through the open one. qualifiers, make it through the regional qualifiers. Bruh. But they still might not even get to play on the main stage. 18 teams from across the world make it to TI8. And of those 18 teams, only 16 will play on the main stage. Even this fight here, they overdive on the Enchantress. They throw a lot of their the stuff. The group stage they... started off not very good for us. Oh, what did you expect out of that? We went one win, five losses. We're almost bottom of the group. It forced us to start reflecting. We had a long talk as a group. The thing that often happens is you, you learn a lot about your opponent, but if you forget who you are along the way, you're going to lose no matter what. We decided we are ourselves when we're together. Win or lose, we do it together. Tornado comes out, and that's enough to finish Mountie. Oh, that's Sepp again, and no! Sepp gets the Marauder as well, and that's it! GG is the call from Ice. started Iceberg. winning pretty much every single series. Don't get GG called yet again. OG. Doing it big here in the group stages. From the bottom of the group, we made it all the way to the upper bracket. OG going to the main stage. It's good to be back. TI main stage. We wanted so bad to just wake up and play those games. Regardless of the result, we just wanted to play those games. It's a 12-hour marathon. They got really rid of those qualities the next year. Uh -huh. Every TI, I'm like, oh, you know, it's another TI. And then yeah. I get here, I'm like, it's as magical as it ever. is, isn't it? We've got six days with the best Dota 2 teams I went to this in the world. It was incredible. Oh. $25 million in total. The top team taking away 11 million of that. The largest eSport prize pool in history. Once again at hand for the chance to wage battle. 
Epic announcer. On the world's biggest stage. To the finest Dota team. Oh, it's Earthshaker. Oh. He sounded like a pro. Like professional voice actor makes sense. Comers alike. The third Touch. iteration of OG. Old rivalries rekindled. Because usually when someone does like a, an announcer like this, it's sound like roar, like it sounds kind of cringe sometimes. But he's a pro. <laughs> Start with the explosive VGJ Storm coming in against OG. VGJ Storm, they've had a fantastic season. They, they, they have to be the favorites here. There's a lot more pressure on OG right now. Anna's got some seconds. experience here, and obviously Seth's got a ton of experience, as has no talent Jamax as well. But what about Thompson in there? It's going through his mind right now. First TI, big, big stage. Going to TI, I mean, for the first time, it's a, it's a different pressure. This Thompson story has got me just tingling. It's so ridiculous. He's got 3K in his bank account, and he's stepping into TI playing for 11 million. It's just absurd. Yeah, how does he know? The I guess Dota he said players, so. The biggest fans just gather for this one event that you yourself have been watching for all the years. And now you're actually right there in the middle of it. It's unreal. Oh, his first international tournament. In I thought, how does he know how much I, he has in his I bank account? I can't put myself in issues. <laughs> I have no idea what that must feel it's like. It's another one of those metaphors, right? They gotta be careful. There's a lot of damage coming in with the hurl boulders. Their first game was really rough. On, on the run, trying to get the heck out of here, but they are isolated. They are killed. We played from behind almost the entire game. Oh my God! Speed to stay away from the damage coming. But I didn't tell that the fighting spirit of everybody on the team was like through the roof. Anna specifically, the way he played, he showed an immense amount of confidence. Anna gonna take a lane of barracks. He went for like really big plays, knowing that we got his back. And like, all right, that guy, that guy's feeling great. You can start to feel something building here for OG. Wow. The previous I'm getting chills. I seven. It seemed like Anna, he was the one that was playing inconsistently, not doing well, getting the most heat from the public. And now all of a sudden, people started looking back and being like, maybe Anna was the magic to their team. Anna picking the tier three tower, now moving on to the other barracks. How quickly things change. Oh, now it's playing my best. We all got a lot of momentum from that first game against VGJ. Best placement that that organization has ever had at the international. Can you believe oh, yeah. it? Game two was pretty much us riding the momentum they and then just kills. like That's not giving them a chance. OG on in the upper bracket. Unbelievable performance from a team that feels like they just formed. Showing up here on the main stage and taking down VGJ Storm that's looked like one of the best teams in the tournament. Looking at OG and how they played today, do you think that momentum is going to carry on? It is definitely possible, but the next round is going to be very, very tough for them. Destiny had it in for us. It just. Wait, it e had to happen. EG? What are your thoughts on facing OG and some of your old pals? And it did happen. EG, OG. Obviously, there's been some history there. So I'm just going to focus on the game. Doesn't matter who I play. Uh, treat it the same way. The chase for the ages of champions continues here in Vancouver. Welcome back to day number three. Ultimate semi-final upper bracket between two teams who know each other far too well for their own good. OG versus EG. I love me some spicy stuff, and OG versus EG yeah. is probably the spiciest match of the entire It's nothing team. to do with the players, and I'm sure they'll be perfect gentlemen, and they'll be sportsmen-like. The hype around the EG OG match was incredible. You know, a classic sports story. The grudge match, the rivalry. It's a rivalry, right? Let's talk about the drama. There's some stuff to talk about there. There's What's your some take stuff. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things to talk <laughs> about there. There's no more iconic duo in the in the history of Dota 2 than No Town and Fly as a player combo. And to see them break up. OG, they're the ones who kind of got left on their own to scramble to find these last minute replacements. 
bring in Anna, they bring in Thompson. They just had their leadership leave the team. They're motivated to get some revenge. Why did you leave OG? The team hasn't worked for a long time. I felt like this is really a team I could win with, as opposed to the previous team where I felt Jinx. like we kind of hit a dead end in the end. I want to win, and I want to do it with teammates I believe in. When Tao says right. that he didn't believe in the team anymore and that it wasn't going to work, I, I know for a fact there was more to it than just that. And let's just leave it at that. No matter what I think about them and what they have done to me, I'm just looking at the Dota part. And they were playing incredibly well, and they were a very scary team to go against. I think it's fair to say that EG are the favorites going into this. They looked super good in the group stage. They looked really convincing in their first upper bracket match. EG is one of the absolute strongest teams here. What a EG mental was game. Favored, but it depends on what you favor, right? I think a lot of people's heart was with the story of OG, even if their minds were with EG. They were the favorite, but it depends on what you favor. OG versus Evil Geniuses. I've never heard that before. I think For it's probably against true. EG, the upper bracket semifinal, our strategy was to force them to pick heroes they weren't used to playing. <laughs> I favor winning. I didn't want them to live Me in too. their comfort zone at all. I wanted to force them to just think on the spot. Blocks as well, Notel, with the transitional set up for the kit. Nice micro there from Notel, as to be expected. What really stands out was specifically Thompson. Uh, I mean, he has to play against the male. Sumail is definitely very confident in himself. Sumail, what's your motivation? Uh, money. Money? Yeah. <laughs> he did win TI when he was 16. Wow. He's had these long periods where he was genuinely the best player in the game, and everybody knew it. I'm the best at it, but I can also make money out of it, so it's just a bonus. And Topias was going to have to play against that guy, right? <laughs> it should be a really rough game for Thompson. But he, he didn't get affected by it at all. He actually played extremely well. As S4 just getting solo killed here by Thompson. As now, looking to fly. Thompson finds the double killer. This man he alive, though, he went on and just like destroyed the game. Tornado, Thompson, he's in with the back of the beat. Deputy Blast coming down, Thompson with the set. He was bullying straight up alone. Bullying, not the moving. Straight on top of our team, he takes him out. He didn't have to say much. There was always somebody dead from the enemy team. GG is cool. And game one. I left my thing. Enjoy the fucking. Thompson definitely coming out strong on that invoker. I think we did a pretty good job of winning in a good way, winning in a way that also damaged their mentality. And a series where I think a lot of people would have expected to see something quite fantastic from EG. OG absolutely crushed it, 32 minutes in, 18k. The pressure, the speed that they could play at, it just never got to a point where Samail or, or Arteezy could really offer much in the fights. They were always playing from behind because of how well OG kept the pressure on. Yep, pretty much. OG currently leads 1-0 in this best of three to try to remain in a secure top three spot. Game two. Can they keep it up in game two? Wait, Earthshaker was doing the live announcements. I thought it was pre-recorded. Well, it might still be. Game two is pretty common. He's trying to back away. The Never mind. Gets the kill. Sims just have to walk underneath the tower. No tell. Just get in. Oh. 16 minutes in or something, it's like, we're, we're, we're stopping. He was there him. live? Oh, okay. He's ready for round two. The question is, are evil geniuses? Game two, it was a pretty good game. If you look at the first 20 minutes, then it stopped being good. So boy, crit charge is through. It's three of them with the charge back. They got the sound attack there. That's going to be out of the line. Like the charge, hoping it's on top of EG. They find the third, and they pulled the game back to a point where the net worth is even. The fact that we beat them once just means that they're as dangerous as a wounded wild beast, you know, like, it's gonna try to kill you uh, as soon as it gets the chance. Thompson, they're on top of them. Charge out straight away, they get the gust through as well. The shards will come down to hold some L back, but it's not enough to save Thompson. We let our guard down. The agent exposed, GG is cool. And EG what a comeback. this series to a game three. Announcer 45, announcer 44. I'm kind of worried for OG for the third game. Can they win? They were better games win. They just outclassed us in every single aspect of the game. I'm expecting some much bigger plays from Sumali. With how strong they started, it just all shattered. This game determines which team gets to secure a top three spot here at the International. 
Game three, from the very beginning, they were in charge. He's starting to get messy here for OG. It was a 3K lead now for EG. EG was a lot about controlling the map. EG, they're still focusing on it. It's a very structured and thought through play style. It's really good, Dota. So it's really hard to get out of it. Like, we're talking, we're just we're just trying to survive that game. Russians are half out, but Jamail Thompson's is dead. You need the five players to be aware of what they're doing in order to break it, right? This time, Thompson didn't carry us. They take it down inside now. Who? Jamail again, double kill. I think Sumai got really angry after the first game. Jamail comes in for the triple kill. Jamail, another ultra kill. Back to back ultra kills for Jamail. Back for round two, they have lost fly, EG. At that point, the game has spun out of control. Samael in for the combo, finds himself no tail. OG, they just have to get themselves the hell out of here. They cannot stand anyway. They had us in a chokehold, but we somehow escaped this chokehold. Easy, can they get anything more? They're able to fight Sunny, they're able to fight Fly, the buyback hole. We clawed our way back. Absolutely doing it, the buyback's there from OG. We ended up forcing them to play a game they did not want to play and they started slowly, slowly playing into our hands, which ended up turning the tides completely. hitting my keyboard so hard that the keys fell off. OG will move one step closer to the ages. I mean, Johan had the look. I've seen him have... You could tell it was about what had happened. I felt extremely angry. I felt really happy. I felt really sad. So I went 31-40 like game. I really in control Damn. of anything. It was just everything coming back to me. The whole Birmingham situation, what the feeling was in the room when we got the news. Yeah, I wonder what happened, B Dot. How things were handled. Everything just came came back to me after we won. Shaking his hand, being the winner. It was very gratifying. Revenge and anger. It's not the healthiest emotions. But uh, right after we walked off stage, Sebastian snapped me out of it. It's like, oh, I don't know what came over me. These guys didn't believe in you. They thought you were not worth their time. And now not only you proved them wrong, it's like you're better than them. OG came into TI he as the underdogs have great who are empathy. now guaranteed top three. So, so. It sounds like a dream, or like it doesn't sound like reality. He knows how people We've think. faced so many failures in the past that we're not ashamed of, we're proud of them. That's what made us... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the penultimate day. We have just five teams remaining. By the end of today, we will know who the grand finalists will be. Let's welcome Team OG, making it to the upper bracket finals. They are ready to face their opponents, PSG LGD. LGD had had very impressive recent tournament results. LGD's run over the last few tournaments, they won two majors very close to the end of the season. I'm on the LGD hype train. My bracket says LGD, right? It, it said LGD from the beginning of the very tournament. This squad was the Chinese chosen one. They looked strong, they had a good strategy, they had their star player, they had all the ingredients to win a TI. Most analysts thought this team, there was no chance for OG. We have the top teams in the Dota scene, and OG, which is maybe the surprise. What do we think about OG making it this far? They weren't even the same team a couple months ago. OG have had such a miracle run. I mean, it is, it's an absolutely remarkable run. You know, even if they don't end up doing so great at the end of it all, they defeated their nemesis already, right? Game one against LGD, it's like when you've been looking at them destroy other teams, and now you have to play against them. A lot of LGD fans, are they still around? Hearing the roar from the crowd every time oh, OGD yes. is mentioned has to put a little bit of intimidation onto OG. These guys were here to win the tournament. But we're so passionate about the game that once the game starts, we just dive into the game. Seb is just all by himself, able to tank through everything. There's no LGD, there's no OG, there's no TI. 
it's just about the game that is in front of you and you have to win it. No, we're spamming in Chinese instead of spamming in English. We're feeling great. We think it's really funny and we're having fun. Unstoppable Enchantress. We were in control of the game. They just eliminate Ame. OG defeating one of LGD's best strategies in game number one. When you're an underdog, that can really help you to play more freely and be more successful. But if you start thinking about winning, that's where you run into trouble. This game should be over. There's too many heroes down. It's tough to call this game. Damn! They're a great team, and we knew that. We knew they were here to crush us if they could. Game was done. They won it. But if you just like set your focus on what matters, what's in front of you, that's game three. Game three. So they're they're tied one one. If OG to win this game three, they are in the grand finals. Oh, the semis. They're making good moves. They're picking us off. Game three. Going from bad to worse for him. I remember we just get slaughtered. They're just all playing us right, left, and center. No tell under the tower. That boy can do no wrong. LGD, they have a good opening to actually close out the game, but they go for the throne. LGD want this now. They basically try to win right then and there, and that was a big mistake. They weren't patient. They couldn't wait. Like, oh, this is ours for sure. This is my pup teammates. They're not right. But it wasn't the time to grab it. There's no way this is gonna work. And we start to counter the play. There's your fire. There's the dust, Jirak. This guy's an NBA all-star. Johnson is there. They push forward. They get the control. LGD with four heroes who do not have buyback. OG, they are going to push. But how Thompson, he showed up in a huge way. All right, we should watch this replay once. Thompson was talking about how his hands were shaking, like... The yeah, amount of adrenaline. Try to focus on clicking the ancient. Hit the ancient, ancient. A few months before, Topson was sitting at home, a very unknown, unproven pub player. And now he's dominating the winner bracket at TI. I just felt so powerful during that moment. It was really great feeling. Probably the craziest game of the whole tournament that we've had so far. OG! They have reached their first TI Grand Final. Holy shit, you're going to the Grand Final. A year ago right now, if someone had told you that you would be playing in the Grand Final of TI8, would you have believed them? No, no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our final day is upon us. I can feel the excitement inside the arena. We're gonna play the TI Grand Finals. I'll be a player in the TI Grand Finals. That's just, that sounded unreal. It's been a lifelong dream for me to get to, get to the finals of TI. I've, I've always wanted to just get there. We yeah. are so excited to play this finals. The Grand Finals of TI8. We kick it off with OG battling all the way through the upper bracket, defying all odds and all predictions. The bad guy dies at the end of the movie. You think it's the end, but it's not. And it's none other than a rematch against PSG LGD. I think we should be the LGD had to fight their way back to the top bracket. LGD end up battling through evil geniuses. LGD smell blood. EG trying to stem the bleeding. GG LGD. Sumai versus um, what's the mid laner name for PSG? That must be something to watch. Shout out to LGD for playing such a good game. Somnus, Sumai Somnus. LGD, they were not done. They, they were coming. They were coming for more. PSG LGD! OG was able to beat LGD in a close best of three. But when you have to rematch again in a best of five, everything goes out the window. Most likely outcome for me is probably LGD winning by three to one. Going up against LGD again in a best of five, some of the doubters online would have still said, 
OG, th th this lineup cannot win a best of five. They cannot win a grand finals. It almost feels like we're looking at a matchup of heart and then closer to machine perfection on LGD, right? And I mean, LGD had to carry that pressure and pride for the whole Chinese scene. There's been one. I think we often say machine perfection for people whose language we don't understand. Like it often happens. It's just because you can't scrutinize them because you never hear from them. It wouldn't be like that if you could like speak openly. We occur them openly for for every international. But they probably like execute the really well West. too. So. West won the first. East won the second. And ever since then, it's been taking turns. We had it in the back of our I heads. I think they have we a really interesting story too. No talk doubt. about it. We were a Chinese team in an even year. You can see that the true side. She's very lucky in China. And then I was like, Let's be honest. It's mostly for Asians. Yeah, it happens a lot for Asians. You saw that often in like Warcraft Three and SC Two as well. It's like, oh, you know. Innovation, he's like a machine, he's a robot, he's not even human. It's really common to dehumanize when you don't like uh, know the, the, and it's not like on purpose, it's like, like not like done maliciously. It's just, uh, you know, you're just thinking poetically and trying to make sense of things. But like, it's the same with Happy, right? Like in Warcraft 3, sometimes I find myself thinking of him as a machine, but he's flesh and blood, he's got worries and he's got strengths and weaknesses. Uh, this year is Chinese year. And Johan, he was like, no, don't think like that. And I was like, come on, man, Anna is a little bit Chinese. <laughs> We're fine either way. If the curse is real, then it's on our side, you know? They're on the control, Jarek straight it on it, Ahmed, Ahmed puts the BKB, but it's too late. Saunders finds no tell on the side, the five match's gonna be there straight Going into the grand finals, OG is comfortable with their strategy. They know that their best hero is Anna's Spectre and they're able to dominate LGD again in game one with that hero. It was like one of them really bloodbath kind of games where both the teams really want to fight, but there was just no way they could fight us in this game. Oh, that first game lineup, it was amazing. What teamwork by OG, every little thing coming together. OG, one game up at the start of this best of five. LGD coming and looking so much more dominant. Oh, the fact that we beat them once doesn't mean it's gonna get easier. We never got a foot in this game. They tried whatever they could to get some advantages in lane, but PSG LGD just not letting a beat go. Chobra. It's just looking almost impossible for OG to come back into this game. Too. We tried our best, honestly. We really tried, but uh, we just couldn't. PSG LGD seems to have the momentum now. Game three. 1-1 one, in one a best of five for the grand finals here at TI8. Dota uh, is a very complex game. Part of Dota is to try to anticipate what your opponent's gonna do. I didn't think that they would have a really good plan. And, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I still don't think that their plan should have worked, but it ended up working. They'll get the Aegis out of his hands. They do lose. The Aegis, can they kill him a second time? For the TP, the Sunray. But the things that should have worked for us didn't work for us. It's Dota. It happens. <laughs> Obviously, this is a rough loss. Two to one now for PSG LGD. This series just heating up. I'd say a couple OG players just need to step it up. They're making those clutch mid to late game plays, but they can't. They need those individuals to step up, whether it's Ana, Topsy. They can play a lot better. We've seen it from OG, oh, yeah. but they're not out of this series. If you're in the biggest match of your life and you're down two to one and you're one game away from losing, you can't freak out. You can't play worse. Don't let the nerves get to you. Not everybody is able to deal with the amount of pressure. Everything is tested, but no till. He has the motivation, he has the drive, he has the experience. He knows what to do to get the best out of his squad. Game number four as PSG LGD leads the series 2-1. When you're down 2-1, your back's really up against the wall. It's very easy to succumb to some kind of pressure. LGD, they're warmed up, right? They're a team that wants it. The crowd, I think, is driving them on too. You hear them Absolutely. every time LGD wins a fight, they're chanting, they're chanting LGD, they're chanting the chat wall lines, and LGD's gonna just make them look worse because of how amazing they are. You know, one more game of Dota, like, that was, uh, that was maybe gonna be it, but we were gonna enjoy it, you know? We went through shit together. Well, Chinese year, though. Chinese year. Yeah, now it's time to see if the curse is real. OG now one game away from losing in this grand finals. It looked like we had no chances. It looked like we were gonna lose. It looked really bad. OG now truly has to fight back. It's not just about the momentum anymore. They are behind. You have to believe in your guts that it's not over. Because obviously everything around you is telling you it's over. That, that's twice in the series that X Nova just comes yeah. out of nowhere. Crawl is cheering against you. It keeps getting harder. You know, you lost one fight, two fights. 
Still Anna holding on. You feel like shit. You feel like it's impossible. They really want to force this PL to come back here. Stand on to Thompson. Stay focused, kids. Another tier three tower pulling incredibly fast. But you have to believe it's fate. Jumps in. Trust your teammates. There's the buyback. The cataclysm isn't enough to do it. Trust in your team, your ability to turn situations around. Get ready for the fight. Seb taken down by Arme. And that very moment, it's the turning point. For this one, the deafening block. Don't break. This is when you pass it. Get focused, Seb. What Sebastian said in the game was like, don't worry, guys. I'm going to carry this game. I just need some time. This is my game, boys. So you got Odie Pixel commentating the match. When you hear a guy that normally talks super fast, just stop and shout one word. Seb! Seb gets the call! I see Seb making a play. I think about this beautiful French man, and all I want to do is shout his name. Three dead now on LGD. I get the chance to prove myself. He hasn't played in a TI since TI2. And now he's back in a grand finals of all places. It's been such an incredible journey for him. When it really mattered, he came out strong, and I'm really impressed by his performance. Before this TI, I had almost given up as a player when I met Johan in OG. It's just crazy. This uh, this changed my life. And again, the call. <laughs> <laughs> if you're LGD and you watch that thing, you must be thinking that God's not on your side or something. We are going to a game five. There we have it. OG Damn. coming up, tying it up 2-2. Two, two. I'm just glad I'm still alive. That's all I can say <laughs> yeah. after that game. I My heart was actually really pounding during those last, I don't know, 20 minutes. That's probably the game of the tournament for me so far. Unbelievable how OG see, somehow seems to end up in every game of the tournament and then they make the next one and the next one This is uh, in and of itself already a miracle story I mean this squad left in shatters and then they come back and, and now they're top two I mean down the 17 here, K goals. And it could be a fairy tale We felt really hype like, guys, this is game five of the freaking TI Grand Final. It was just the energy that we had, like really good energy. The electricity was in the air, but there was nothing bad about it. You know what happens? I know we're all really proud of what we did, and we should be, ready. so we earned the game five. We saw the game part, so let's We earned the game five. Together. Intentional together. Freudian slip. Stay together, stay together, stay together. Stay together. Stay together. Right. How crazy is it that we're gonna get the chance to play that game? They're just super happy to play together. They're super happy to be on the stage and they just enjoy every game. Everyone's ready for another close match and OG opens up with a really unusual pick. Me and Sebastian started talking about the draft for the game five and like favorite heroes of all time, signature heroes. What hero am I gonna play to try to win TI? I was personally very confident on Prophet. Yeah, oh, I thought that's Prophet. Jerex, he was like, I want Rubik. <laughs> Jerax was feeling it. He, he was liking it. And Sebastian, for a very long time, has been Magnus. But they just all picked their favorites? Yes, 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 yes. I, I want to play Magnus. This is it. For Anna, it's always been Ember. In the spirit. It was like a risky floor pick, but yeah, I just felt it. And as for Thompson, he ended up playing Zeus. Zeus. The priority was not to get what would have been perfect. The priority was to get what would make us happy and make yeah. us enjoy that game and play it as well as we could play Just it. pick your favorite. They're lucky it wasn't like Slark, Gyrocopter, Timbersaw or something. heroes that all players are incredibly comfortable on. But at the same time, you shouldn't be able to win with these heroes. Can they really do the impossible and destroy LGD, the strongest team in China, like when sense. there's $25 million on the line? SG LGD gets that first blood. Whatever we try, they counter. Whatever we do, they anticipate. There's no tail, also in trouble. Give it our best, but it's just not good enough. Arme 
He's turned up, and he'll be able to take down Rana. Rana, kill after kill. It was a bit rough, I'll be honest. Hey, you lose, but at least you lose on your heroes, yeah? We just played our hearts out. Keep trying. We keep fighting. Keep feeding each other energy, confidence. And confident, knowing Seb can sit there on the high ground, ready with the camp. What's the armlet swapping during TP? Into like a whole different beast. He was screaming. Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. Yo, 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 yo. I've never heard him scream. If he had been a wild dog off a leash, he turned into like a racetrack dog that was going ham. It's OG. They fight three. It's like unreal. We're playing the TF Grand Final. Saunders, he'll go down as well. God. It's almost as if we're playing drunk party pops or something. It was crazy, man. They chased him down. They get the team wipe. I think that was one of the most enjoyable games for me to play. Things can go so wrong and then still so right. Oh, gee. They just crumbled.